my name is Woody. I'm known as Wayne Shedd. Uh, I'm an arrowhead collector and hunter. I've spent about 50 years in northern Maine looking for arrowheads. I've uh, logged about 6,300 hours out there and I figured I've walked about 13,000 miles. Lenny and I have, have uh, exchanged ideas and theories and we've looked at it, each one another's artifacts over the past few years. Uh, he has developed an interesting theory called Reading Indian Artifacts. I'll let him give his presentation and I'll give my comments on his theory at the end of, it, of the discussion. I'd like to introduce to you Lenny Murphy. Yes, thank you Woody. All right. Okay, I guess my theory start uh, from early on when the Indians were first starting to use just a few flakes to do some of the chores they had to achieve. Uh, I guess from the single flake they had to uh, put on the flake uh, just little indentations or little high spots to accommodate their needs to have finger positions on the tools. Uh, basically this theory is going to take the standard arrowhead type that we're used to and somewhat turn it into a finger tool and by studying the physical evidence on the old tools that were obviously used in the fingers and as I call them finger tools to give it more distinction uh, it kind of brings out how the uniface scraper was held between the first two fingers and the thumb and over time they used the same finger tool positions when they went into the biface tools they kept most of the biface tools flat on one side with a higher arc on the opposite side to accommodate the finger positions for the first two fingers and the thumb below on the flatter side. And basically that's what I stumbled onto accidentally was the thought process that went into refining tools from early on and as they advanced they kept the same finger positions even though they went from the uniface which is flat on one side to the biface tools which is worked on both sides. Uh, from there, I guess I had to reevaluate some of the previous theories I had written myself that said that some of these tools were hefted, were tied into different handles. But by studying the physical evidence of all the Indian artifacts I found on my own site in Medford, Maine, uh, it led me, led me to believe that the 1400 thumbnail scrapers were all finger tools held there again between the first two fingers and the thumb. And with that thought process and finding the finger positions and the physical evidence, it led me into the realization that the other tools that I was finding, the arrowhead types, triangular types, are pretty much every type of arrowhead type of tool that's out there were basically used by a woman as finger tools and were much more refined than we ever thought possible. Uh, because we were just assuming that they were tied on to a handle, so we didn't look or didn't understand the additional refinement that was uh, advancing the, the primitive flakes that were used for hundreds of thousands of years into the biface tools. And with that technology that continued through time, uh, there again I would assume that the women were doing most of the work, which has been pretty well proven and there again the woman would have needed most of the tools to achieve their jobs that they were accomplishing to help advance society. Uh, they really had quite a hard task I would think to, to preserve enough food to take care of the family and they had that responsibility obviously bestowed upon them at a very young age realizing they'd have to take care of their child to feed it through the winter so they were quite advanced in their thought process and in their finger tool manufacture to achieve the types of preservation of food and uh, just to have food on a regular basis, uh, let alone preserving 
You need a lot of tools for clothing and things of that nature. So basically the advancement of the flake into the arrowhead type of tool uh, was just a natural progression over time. And the side notches that we see on a lot of arrowhead types of tools uh, is old technology taken from the flake. So the side notches and base notches basically were actually finger positions for placement of the fingers for pushing the tool for perforators and most of the biface tools and uniface tools are also used in both directions as well. And when one notices the finger positions, the little high ridges that have been cut down on purpose to fit the fingers and the polish over time from the fingers, one can quickly evaluate most tools and see that they were finger tools and put a true interpretation on them and not just assume that they might have been projectiles because they were side notch. But originally when you had an indentation or a high point on a tool, uh, those were obviously used to the advantage of the tool maker as push points to perforate uh, the different leathers or different uh, clothing that they were trying to make. And there again that evolved over time to make it look like the side notches were for tying, but basically they're mostly for finger positions. And you might find that some of the scrapers might have been tied off where the hefting area was just so when they relieved the scraper from their fingers it would hang from their wrist. But there again, side notch not for hefting, more so just for keeping the scraper uh, close by as well as also for the finger positions, you need them side notches so that the fingers can can have a, a firm place to to work from, to push from. And that basically is, is kind of how I uh, came across this, these new thought processes. And when I was told that the arrows and the bows and arrows were only around the Americas for 2,000 years, I had to question the arrowhead types I was finding on my site, which were claimed to be four to 5,000 years old. So when I studied them to see what they were, if they were projectiles, I had to put my fingers on them there again as I did the scrapers. And it quickly led me into the thought process by studying the, the projectile types that they're also uh, worked out to fit the fingers in both directions. And there again on the work sites and in the fields, that's where people go to look for artifacts. And there again, that's where the woman were doing their work was in the fields. And if you want to tie in several different features of the artifacts, uh, the small little uh, minute pieces like we have in front of us here that are too small to, to be any kind of projectile in any effective method, they might have been used as, as jewelry but we find most of them shortened and, and quite used and a lot of finger polish. So I would assume that most of them were used by young girls for perforating and uh, making holes in shell beads and you know holes in leather and anything that they needed. Uh, they had the tool in their, in their little bag, I guess, to achieve it. And when they get short and dull, as we see by most artifacts, they're still somewhat usable uh, the way they're found today, but when they get a little short and dull, they're discarded. And that's why most tools are found today fairly intact, and yet with a lot of polish and a lot of use wear that, that wasn't really fully understood. Uh, they might have attributed some of the use wear or polish to hefting, but if that would be the case with most arrowheads, the polish is also in the middle section where the fingers are and there would be no reason to heft anything in the middle if it was a projectile obviously. So over time and adding up all the physical, ev physical evidence and all the clues that were involved uh, just led me to these working theories as I call them because the theories actually work and I can show with physical evidence that these artifacts are uh, far more refined than we thought they were in the past. They were just uh, you know, flaked out to, to put on a shaft. There was a lot more thought process put in uh, to have proper placement for the fingers in both directions there again. And the larger tools, they're also used on the side 
or the tool as a cutting tool, like the woman's tool, as they call it, the ulu, from Alaska, uh, which shows there again further physical evidence that the women were using the stone tools because the ulu is called the woman's tool, and it is a piece of slate that's ground and polished, and they had to keep it sharp constantly. And between the ulu and the mortars and pestles and the stone beads that the woman's obviously made, uh, I see several instances where stone tools were uh, the handicraft of woman. And as far as I can tell, I haven't been able to determine any physical evidence at all that the men were involved in this tedious little chore of making little tedious tools for their for the little tedious chores they had to achieve. Uh, the men were satisfied with bone and wooden shafts for their projectiles. And most uh, projectile types or atlatls are found with bone and once in a while they do find some with stone points. But there again where most stone points were refined for the fingers, we might want to study those that are tied on to some kind of a shaft and see if it was a, a previous finger tool that was discarded and picked up by later generations and used as a projectile. So I still feel that, that most projectiles of stone uh, were previously used as finger tools and then picked up by later generations and used as projectiles. So by studying the ones that I found and tied on to a shaft. If one could study the, the microscopic details on there, you still might find the refinement that was made originally for uh, the finger positions. And they're again used as a finger tool originally. So there's a lot of science that needs to be uh, further evaluated. Uh, there's a lot of science that needs to be properly uh, evaluated in the sense that now that we can understand uh, all these individual clues on the artifacts, uh, we can ascertain that these were finger tools and not projectiles. And I think we're a little bit prejudiced today in a manner of speaking because we were born of flight. We have airplanes and things of this nature. So when we see something that has a side notched uh, worked out on an arrowhead type where you just assume there again that something was tied around there for hefting for for a projectile or a knife but there again when we're talking about you know stone tools that are thousands of years old we can't assume anything onto that artifact for modern day we really have to go back and think about the past from the past and look at the physical evidence for what it has to offer and not draw any assumptions just because something you know looks like it was tied on as a projectile or has side notches we have to there again evaluate why they had side notches originally and when they were flaking out a tool originally and it had a notch or a high point they could see the advantage of that as a uh, push point for their finger tool uh, jobs that they had to achieve and that just advanced to the point where they look like they're projectiles uh, but there again the physical evidence is going to show otherwise.